Uh, John Houck here. Welcome, uh, La Pavoni people. And I want to talk to you a little bit about low water flow when you raise the uh, lever. So when you raise the lever, the piston raises up, and at some point when you raise it, water floods into the group head. And uh, once that water's all the way in, then you can go ahead and push down and extract your espresso, <clears throat> and everything's good. But you might notice, especially with the portafilter detached, as you raise this up, not much water flows through, maybe not as much as when you first received the machine, um, and it just seems to trickle out instead of uh, spray out with a fair amount of force. So um, obviously one of the problems might be your boiler is empty uh, of water, obviously. Uh, another one might be your boiler pressure is low, and uh, I would suggest you open up your steam wand and see if there's plenty of steam. If there is, then your boiler pressure is fine. So if you have water and high boiler pressure and you still notice a low amount of water flow when you, you raise the piston all the way, uh, well, what's happening and what can you do to fix it? Well, uh, one of the possibilities is that the water isn't able to flow through this hole. So um, the water comes in through the boiler, goes through this channel up here. This is the Generation 3 group head, but it's this, this what I'm explaining really applies to all group heads. Um, there's a little hole on the side of the uh, cylinder where the water inlet comes through and it fills the area underneath the piston and you're ready to uh, pull your shot once all the water is in and you lower the lever and uh, out comes your espresso. Well, <clears throat> one of the problems is if this piston doesn't go all the way up, then the water flow will be restricted uh, or, or even stopped. So um, let's take a look at what can happen. Um, if we raise this all the way up, and we'll see that what stops the piston from going all the way up is it uh, bottoms out, if you will, contacts this little flange that's uh, in the group head, way up inside of the group head. And, um, but if um, this, lever doesn't go up anymore and there's two things stopping the lever one is the lever might actually hit this acorn nut uh, right right here uh, another possibility is there's this roller bearing that's inside of here and it travels in the slot that's in the group head and if that roller bearing uh, comes to the end of its travel you can see it comes to the end of the travel that way or this way if it comes to the end of travel that's going to also prevent the lever from going up any further so um, let's say the lever only goes up so far um, and, uh, um, and, and your piston is still not going up high enough. What could the cause of that be? Uh, so what I will do is I will go into just looking at the piston and the piston rod. And let's say that the piston rod is not screwed all the way into the piston. And it looks like this. You see what I did there? So let me go ahead and just cut that out real quick. Uh, so you can kind of see what's going on. So it's not threaded all the way in. So if I go back and change this to how it was before, um, you can see this is what it looks like when it's all the way threaded in. You can kind of see there's a there's a nice tight connection there. So let's go back and change this to um, a three millimeter gap and uh, take a look at that and uh, see what that does to our, our group head. So when we go to the group head now, you can see we've got this three millimeter gap here. And when we go to raise this piston up, it's going to stop there because we've hit the end of travel over here. We've hit the acorn nut. Looks like we've actually hit it pretty hard. Uh, end of travel there. And uh, so as you raise this up, um, water's just not going to flow in very well. So how do you go about repairing this? Well, um, in the CAD model, you just go back here and you say, well, let's screw that in all the way. Um, but in real life, it's not quite that easy. Uh, you, you need to um, remove the piston, the piston rod, and then screw that tighter. So the first thing you want to do is remove this pin here. And to remove that pin, you have to pull this little clevis pin out. And so you can get a small little screwdriver, put it in here, and then try not to scratch your uh, lever, uh, the fork of your lever. But a little flat-bladed screwdriver in there, push it out. I'm sure there are more specialized tools for doing it. Or a larger flat-bladed screwdriver going across both sides here and push down. Um, and then um, uh, before you put it back together, you can buy replacement pins that are, have nice screws on them. So that way you don't have to play with these uh, little clevis pins in, in your life anymore. Um, all right. Uh, once that's out, uh, you can remove these two uh, nuts. In fact, 
uh, because this um, pin keeps the uh, piston from rotating, it's going to be a lot easier if you take these two off, take the acorn and the lock nut off first, then pull this out. And uh, once that's out, then the piston will just drop down. Uh, but um, your shower screen is going to stop the piston from com coming all the way out as well. So um, how do you get the shower screen out? Well, you the shower screen is held in by this rubber gasket. The rubber gasket is kind of smashed in between uh, this ridge inside your group head. And you can see that the shower screen kind of has a lip that the, uh, allows the uh, rubber gasket to keep the shower screen from falling out. Um, all kinds of ways of doing that. I'm not going to say this is the best way, but this is the way I do it. Um, I bought a little set of picks. I use this one right here, the, the one on the right. And I stab, whoops, I literally stab this O-ring, um, uh, this gasket, uh, right in the center and pull it out, maybe stab it on this side, and, uh, and, and then you pull it out, and then the shower screen will drop out, and you'll notice it's a little dirty, so you want to clean that. Then this whole uh, assembly will drop out, and then you can uh, tighten the, um, uh, the piston shaft into the piston. You may want to uh, maybe put that pin in, maybe unhook the whole, um, uh, the whole lever from this side as well, and that way you can keep this shaft from turning as you uh, grab maybe with a towel or a rag and, and, and grab the piston and tighten it. Maybe you want to take it all the way apart, put some Loctite on there or some other thread locker to try to keep it from uh, uh, coming undone again. Um, I'll leave that up to you as to what kind of uh, thread locker. Maybe you just want to use some Teflon tape. Um, but if you use Teflon tape, you want to make sure, again, that it's not preventing this from, from seating all the way. Um, then the hardest part about putting this back together is as you're pushing the piston back up into the group head, this little um, uh, gasket has, show from this angle, these gaskets have little angles on them. And that makes it exceedingly frustrating to uh, push that little gasket up inside of the sleeve. Uh, again, this is a Generation 3 group head, but the other group heads have uh, similar issues. Um, so you can just sit there and, and play with it, try to squish this rubber gasket as you're pushing it in. Um, there's some tools you can buy that make that easier as well. Um, uh, but also, before you put it back together, you may want to get some food safe, high temperature um, uh, lubricant. Uh, comes in a little tube. You can find that uh, at, at coffee supply places as well. Um, maybe give that a little dab and maybe wipe down the inside of the, uh, the group head uh, if there's any debris in there. Uh, shouldn't be too dirty. Um, and then you put the shower screen in and then you jam this uh, gasket in and you can say, well, John, you just destroyed it with, uh, with this nice little red-handled pick. I've put them back in many, many times and not had a problem. So stabbing them doesn't make them unusable. But uh, maybe before you do this job, uh, grab yourself an extra one of these um, and have it on, on hand um, should you need to put it back in. Um, and of course, I'm sure people are going to leave comments all over the place as to better ways to do this. Um, so I'm not saying that's the best way, but it's a way that I do it. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, it's already been eight minutes. Uh, appreciate your time and uh, leave some messages if you have some questions. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.